Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to take you through some of the options for scripting within Mongoose. Before we begin, we want to make sure that you're set up to use a, a development environment. And normally Mongoose will run as a background service. In fact, you can see it if you run the services application and look for your IDEO runtime service. Now, this is a background service that everyone connects to when they run Mongoose. Uh, if you want to ring fence things, if you want to make sure that it's only running your session uh, so that you can do debugging and, and really do some introspection into what's happening behind the scenes, it's a good idea to try and run the IDEO runtime service in the developer mode. In order to do this, what you do is you look for your Mongoose installation folder you take an IDEO runtime host and send that to the desktop as a shortcut. Do the same thing with WinStudio. Once you've got those on the desktop, you can run them from here. First thing you need to do though is in the properties for the IDEO runtime, you need to add the multi-user flag. Uh, the multi-user flag just tells it that you're going to be running it as a desktop application, which creates an IDEO runtime development server. Once you do this, you've effectively running Mongoose yourself. From here, you can see which sessions are available. You can even add a wiretap to look at the, the XML data going to and from, and you can clear the metadata cache directly from here. What we're going to do is run the WinStudio shortcut that we dropped on earlier, and sign in with a development user. At the moment I'm using SA, but it's a good idea to create your own development user, especially in a multi-developer environment. Now, now that we're in, we should see that in the background, the SA session has started and we're beginning to see the diagnostic, the logs, and all the SQL statements and everything that's happening in the IDEO runtime. So we know our session is connected to our local runtime. Now, We've been through how you can create a local IDEO runtime that's running on your desktop, which gives you information about um, what's going on, and also ring fences your Info Mongoose session to this particular IDEO runtime server, which means you're not going to conflict with anybody else who's working on the same IDEO runtime on the same server. What we can do now is we can create an IDEO project that we're going to do our, our coding work against. There's one I created earlier just called code temp you can reuse an existing one if you want but basically this is just to ring fence all of the IDEOs that I'm going to be working with for the coding just to make sure that they're isolated from any other development or projects that we're doing. Once I have that I'm going to create a new IDEO and a new form and a SQL table to contain all of that data. So I'll go into design mode and we can do all of this in one step if we use a new data maintenance wizard. So I'm going to choose my coding project and I'm going to create a code people idea. It's going to be a simple one with an ID property with which is a long integer. It's going to be a primary key which means it's also going to be required and the default value is going to come from an auto number routine that we have built into Mongoose which just gives us the next number in the series. As well as this we're going to have a full name property which is a string length 255 and we're also going to have a date of birth or DOB which is going to be of type date. Okay so now that that's there we press next and the new data maintenance wizard is going to create not just the the SQL table behind that it's going to create us the IDO and it's also going to generate us a new form and here we go with that. So we've got the SQL table which has all of the columns and properties that we identified. In addition, we get for free all of the Mongoose order trail properties. The idea which has been generated again has those same properties and all of these are bound to the column on the SQL table. And finally we get our form. And if we just go into design mode on our form temporarily, and we're just going to make sure with the behavior that the initial command is going to refresh the form and we're going to prefer to use C Sharp in this project, so we'll set the script language for the form to be C Sharp. We'll also give ourselves a little bit more real estate on the screen to play with, and we'll make the size 80 wide. Okay, so now if we run this form, we can begin to start entering some data. So we can create a Dave Davis, date of birth is uh, January 20th, 1985. And we'll create another record as well. And we've got Jim Jimney. Again, we can specify date of birth there. We'll create August 12th, 
1965. Okay, so now we have two people and this is the idea that we're going to be working with so in subsequent sessions we'll start the coding itself.